it may be a bad shot, but this is real. I mean, the, the, the bones, that's real. Yeah, my bones, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm five, seven, and thin. I can understand what you mean. But that's not just thin. No, what is it? Diane, tell me. Do you know? It's scary thin. I can believe what you, what you feel. I can believe that. But do you really know? Do you really know? No, you know. Thank you. Anorexia. No way. They've written it. No way. Bulimia. No way. That it's because of drugs? No. Mm -mm. Now, I grant you, I partied. But there have been times when I know I was going through a lot of emotional stress and my eating habits were awful. Whitney dying. Crack rehab fails. First of all, let's get one thing straight. Crack is cheap. I make too much money to ever smoke crack. Let's get that straight, okay? We don't do crack. We don't do that. Crack is whack. Officer at the Expressive Star in the investigation report. On Saturday, February 11, 2012, 2104 hours, Sergeant Publican reports the possible driving of the 48 year old female, Lieutenant Bright Alice Symes, case. I arrive on scene at 2220 hours. Cleared it on Sunday, February 12, 2012, 0 35 hours. The seated removed from the bathtub by her assistant and bodyguard. Paramedics moved her to the living room floor for first aid. Paramedics relocate the couch to the patio for first aid, where the decedent's purse was. The California driver's license was missing from her wallet, which was inside the purse. Prescription medication bottles were taken from a brown bag on the living room table and placed back on it. After investigation, change it from natural versus accident to accident. The decedent possibly overdosed with narcotics prescription made over-the-counter drugs and alcohol. Minor trauma noted, no signs foul play. Um, as Whitney's assistant, can you tell us what actually happened on that day? I spoke with the technician at the scene. So, Whitney supposed to check in on Monday for the Grammy Awards. And the Whitney supposed to attend the pre Grammy party on Saturday. Lesson uh, a life between 2:45 p.m. to 3 p.m. the day, and she complained to me that she had a sore throat. Then I told her to go to take a bath and start getting ready for the night, and I left her. Uh, to go to the other artist, which is uh, Neiman Marcus. Then I'm coming back, return to the hotel at 
26 pm then I found her lying face down in the bathtub uh, facing to the west which water filled the tub spilling onto the floor and then I called the bodyguard to pull her out then I don't know what to do so I called 911 at 3.43 p.m. then the paramedic arrived at 3.46 p.m. Please record me. On Saturday, February 11, 2012, I collected several prescription medication bottles, Visipacs, and Lube's tablets from the living room. There was a capsule and an empty Visipac found on the floor in the southwest area. Moving to the bedroom, I retrieved more prescription bottles, Lube's tablets, and a supplement from the dresser in the southwest corner. I recovered a bottle of prescription medication and a spoon with a white crystal-like substance along with a rolled up paper from the bathroom counter. Notably, I discovered traces of a white powdery substance in the bathroom drawer and underneath the mirror. All these items were subsequently booked as evidence at the Forensic Services Center. On the same night, I oversaw criminalist Mark Sharp's examination at the scene. He utilized a cubic hair kit, collected fingernail, lippings, and took hair strands from the decedent. A thorough sexual assault kit examination was also conducted. All the collected kits were duly filled and booked at the Forensic Services Center for further analysis and investigation. Okay, so let's focus on the detailed analysis of the perivuscular system for the ASPI report. So starting with the aorta, we observed uniform elasticity throughout with vessel showing normal distribution. However, we do not the presence of lipid shrinking indicating potential cholesterol deposit. Moving to the abdominal aorta, there is minimal atherosclerosis throughout any classification so no dilatation or aneurysm is evident in the lower optimal segment major branches of the aorta show no abnormalities shifting our intention to the heart we find no significant anomalies the heart weighs 340 grams within the normal range chambers appear well developed without any neural thrombosis. Valves show no anomalies, remaining thin, leafy, and competent. We not segmental coronary arteriosclerosis lead up to 63% uh, occlusion of the right coronary artery at 4 cm from the optosium. The left anterior descending Artery show minimal autopolysis and no other endocardial, valvular, or myocardial lesions are present. Sorry, doctor. I think you can start now. So, let's delve into the specifics of toxicology dissemination. Okay. Um, various samples have been collected and submitted to the laboratory for analysis, including the blood of the heart, the left femoral vein, the right femoral vein, the bile, the liver, 
Yuin, some contents, vitreous tractable air, serum from the hard blood, and we centrifuge the red blood cells from the hard blood. We also um, requested a comprehensive screen to identify any, um, you know, any presence of any potential toxic substances. So we included tests for vitreous glucose, electrolytes, and urea nitrogen to assess her metabolic state. So hemoglobin test screening has been ordered to examine her, you know, if she has any abnormalities related to skin, uh, and also sickle cell disease. And after that, furthermore, we investigated the presence of alprazole, which us doctors usually prescribe to patients with anxiety disorders. So it's imperative that we conduct a thorough and exhaustive analysis of the samples to accurately determine the presence of any toxic substance and their potential effects and you know impacts also on the individual's psychological functions. So based on the toxicology results, um, we have identified that the resident had ingested multiple, multiple substances prior to her demise. The primary substance detected was cocaine, or as she liked to call it, crack. The resident herself strongly denied the consumption of cocaine in her life, but we believe that very substance killed her eventually. In addition to cocaine, we also noted the presence of benzodiazepines or specifically alprazolam that I've said before, a medication commonly prescribed for anxiety disorder. She is somehow prescribed with this by her doctor, Dr. G. Chase and Dr. R. Collins. And also at the end we also find some traces of marijuana in her system. So the combined presence of this substance points to a complex mixture of drugs, each with its own effects on her central nervous system. It is very crucial that we take into account the interaction of this substance to fully comprehend their contribution to the sequence of events leading to a tragic outcome. I miss you, Whitney. The news of Whitney Houston passing has reverberated deeply throughout the music industry and beyond. Her voice was a force of nature, a gift that touched the heart of millions around the world. Her contribution to the music scene, especially during the 80s and 90s, were nothing short of legendary. Her absence will undoubtedly leave an irrepressible void in the heart of her fans and music community as a whole. Absolutely, a very public struggle with a substance abuse shed a glaring light on the pervasive dangers of addiction, even among those who appear to have it all. It was a stark reminder that fame and success do not shield anyone from the challenges of mental health and the temptations of substance misuse. The story serves as a cautionary tale, urging us to address the underlying issues that can lead to addiction with empathy and understanding. In light of this heartbreaking loss, it's imperative that we prioritize the establishment of robust and accessible support systems for those battling addiction. We must invest in comprehensive intervention programs that do not only treat the physical aspect of addiction, but also address the underlying emotional and psychological factors. By fostering a culture of compassion and support, we can create a safer environment where individuals feel empowered to seek help and embark on a journey towards recovery and healing. Whitney's legacy should inspire us to strive for a society that values mental health and provides the necessary resources to help individuals overcome the grief of addiction.